So, Sea Milk. Yeah. Are you aware that in China, there's a saying what? that there are no bad students, only bad teachers? <sighs> I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I fully disagree with that. Yeah, but you've heard that saying, right? I have heard that saying. Unfortunately, I believe that the parents are at fault. Yes, correct. Anyway, we're going to be talking about parenting in China, and it's a it's an interesting topic, especially since China. It's still finding its bearings, let's be honest, after a huge amount of turmoil and the whole family structure here in China has been turned upside down a few times in recent history Yeah. Uh, and society as a whole. So we're going to be talking about this and trying to fill you in as much as possible based on our own personal observa observations. So we're kind of in the nice countryside here. Um, it's beautiful. Ru rural countryside, lovely roads and everything. So let's hit the road and let's talk about this. Cool. Before we start talking about, like, I know you've got some stories about your wife's childhood and stuff, um, but before we get into that, I would like to say to you that I have never seen as many spoiled brats in my life as since I've been living in China. Would you agree or disagree? I'd fully agree, and I actually, I love that you brought that up because one, there's probably one of the biggest misconceptions mm -hmm. that I see amongst some of the older viewers that we have that are in America or in the West. Yeah. They think that America is going down the tube. Typical, like, with any older generation person, they start seeing society's faults and blaming yeah. change and saying it's all negative. They say, like, oh, you kids nowadays, they're terrible, you know, they're doing drugs young and having sex young and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And they're like, man, you guys are so lucky in China, you're lucky to have a kid in China because I bet it's everything's on the straight and narrow over there. I bet they're well behaved and, you know, yeah. They don't have freedom because it's a one-party state, but, you know, at the end of the day, these kids, you know, they get to have a good education and there's rules, right? Yeah. And they yeah. couldn't be more wrong. Correct. Absolutely correct. You know, that's the thing. I, I'm going to quickly tell you, uh, my first trip to America, which was, what, like a year or so ago, um, yeah. the first time I went, I was shocked at how well-behaved children are in America. Okay. Now I know we're going to get comments here and people are like, well, go to downtown Chicago, or go to <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> downtown Chicago with you. Or, yeah, in New Jersey, you don't pump your own gas. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just not interested in that. I'm talking on a whole, okay? Right. Um, in restaurants, children are fairly well-behaved. In yeah. fact, there wasn't a single situation where I was in a restaurant with children screaming or running around. It'd be a huge deal. Yeah. Um, I was actually standing outside my hotel room in uh, the Queen Mary, you know the Queen Mary? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was staying there with my, my friend Dan there, you know, separate rooms. And okay. um, <laughs> I was standing waiting for him, obviously, t to come out so we could go get breakfast together. Sure. And a young boy, probably like 10 years old or so, walked past me in the hall and he stopped and he sort of said, Good morning, sir. And, you know, How I, nice was, of him. I was taken aback. I've never, ever, ever in my entire whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, I see him. <laughs> in my entire like life here in China, had a random kid come up to me and say, you know, good morning, sir. Right. You know, I'll have them point fingers at me and say like foreigner, foreigner, but I never had someone be polite to me like that. No ch child anyway. Right. So it blew me away. And how about like? Didn't you have some experiences when you were back there recently? Yeah, actually, uh, it wasn't that recent, but when I went back, I actually um, had had some experience in China at that point teaching kids. Yeah. And because I had never taught back home in America, I actually had, I had no impression about how good or bad the kids could be. Yeah. I just assumed that when you teach, the kids are really, really naughty. And one of the most difficult things about teaching for anyone is to keep classroom control. Right. Now, to my shock, because, again, I was teaching in China. These kids were pretty terrible, some of them. Yeah. You know, I'd have to stop fights all the time. They'd be flicking each other in the balls and throwing <laughs> stuff. And, you know, I'd have kids throw tantrums and try to hit me in class. And it happens. And I thought that was normal. Even though growing up, you know, I thought it maybe, maybe it's a generation difference. Because sure. I never saw that growing up. But I went back and I taught similar age kids as a guest teacher for my brother's class. Right? Yeah, yeah. And Lord Almighty... When that teacher told me that there was one particular student I, I'd have to watch out for and tell her if there was any problems. Yeah. When that kid was more polite than every single kid I had in China. <laughs> I mean, these kids were politely raising their hands saying, Mr. Tai, mm -hmm. Mr. Milk, and raising their hand. I have, oh, I have a question. What? Do Chinese, do Chinese students like to do this and this and this and layer? They were so calm and lined up nicely. And I was, I was almost in tears, dude. It was like, I don't want to go back to, I want to go back to China, but I don't want to go back to teaching these kids because sure. man, these kids are so well behaved. Yes, yes, yes. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. 
I've got some some stories I'm gonna have to tell, but we have to give context here. Yeah, we have you know, to talk about why. Yeah, I, it's not fair to just kind of go ahead and judge Chinese Say children Chinese as kids being, are bad, yeah. being badly behaved. You have to understand the circumstances. Especially uh, where I live in this rich city of Shenzhen, a lot of the children, they've got rich parents, okay, yeah. but they're not very well parented because the parents are either not around because Business they're people. working, yeah. so they're looked after by nannies. Um, or their grandparents are somehow involved. Basically, what you've got is you've got a situation where, because of the one-child policy, you know, they only have one child. And we all know that single children tend to be more spoiled anyway, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Because you can't play them off the other one and be like, you see, your sister did a better job, so I'm going to give her the cookie. And yes. now it's kind of like, well, you're the only one, so, you know, you get the cookie no matter what. <laughs> right. So, they're first of all, they're single children. And all the, the hopes and dreams of the, the whole family, not just the parents, you know, this is the thing. Cause it's the got, whole family. There's this extended family thing going on in China. So the grandparents and the parents, yes, they yes, yes. are lavishing this child with everything that it wants because this child is the heir and the continuation of their entire family, correct? They're under the impression that the more they give them as children, the better they'll be treated later on in life. Yeah, the better the children are going to treat them. Right. So, now they do have very high standards when it comes to education. So the children must be passing their grades. Of course. Okay, Careful. they must be getting like 90, 100% on their tests. Yes, yes, yes. But everything else, whatever, man. Like Anything you want. You want it, you get it. And yep. uh, this leads to this awful situation where parents do not know how to discipline their children. Right. And people out there are going to be saying, how dare you judge how other, peop other people's parenting. I'm going to say, I can judge because it's awful. Yeah. And if you live here, you're allowed to judge. And it's, n again, this is not a blanket statement. Like, yes. there are very I, good parents. I know some people who have Infectable. very well-behaved right. children, but in general, because when you're out in public, you get to see it. Yeah. You get to see the child throwing a tantrum in the restaurant because they're not getting their ice cream or whatever they want. And then the, the grandparent or the parent that's with them, the only way they know to stop the child's tantrum is to give them what they want. You're you absolutely know? correct. Dude. They, they don't know how to discipline them. They don't know how to say, no, you can't have it. And you, if you don't shut up, you'll never have another one. Right. All they can do is like, okay, 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 I'll give it to you. So, I got some stories here. I hope you can indulge me. Okay. Sure. I'll have a quick I'll have a quick one. I actually have a video about this time that I stepped in on one of these awful situations where the child is basically abusing the father in public at a barbecue store. Okay. But I have an old drunken video. I'm going to link it. I'm going to talk about one kid in particular. Okay. Because this sticks in my mind because it was when I was first here in China. So, I got this uh, job. It's kind of like a private job. Okay. Uh, you know, I was working at this kindergarten and the kindergarten was making money on the side by on the weekends doing these extramural classes with children. Sure. So they were like, listen, there's a student, you're going to go stay with him and some of his friends at their house, okay, for the yeah. weekend, you're going to take them to the park, you're going to take them out to eat, and the whole thing is that you teach them English the whole time. Sure. So, you know, you speak English, you don't speak any Chinese, that kind of thing. So I was like, cool, you know, the pay wasn't much at all, but at the time I was so broke, I'd be like, whatever, you know, you got money, I'll take it. <laughs> sure. Um, so the first thing that happens is we all go to KFC. Um, and this, the child's mother's there as well. So the child's mother, two of the child's friends, and this child is a little, little emperor. We call them, you know, a little fat, yeah. fat little spoiled boy. So we're sitting in KFC, and he just orders whatever he wants. So he orders like a bunch of chicken drumsticks, ice cream, a milkshake, and whatever else. He's got a whole bunch of fries and all that, right? Yeah. And he just starts messing around, playing with his food, and he makes this mixture. He, like, takes um, <laughs> ice cream and milkshake, he puts french fries in it, puts a drumstick in it, mixing it around. Gross. He puts salt and whatever else. <laughs> he made this disgusting thing. And then he, he takes it, and he shows it to his mother. He, like, hands it to his mother, says, Mama, chö. Right. And, and his he mother's like, yeah, his mother's like, uh, no, I don't want it. And she's like, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh. She was actually being very meek. And he's like, no, chö. And his mom's like, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. and he's I like, Mama, chö! And the mother's like, oh, okay, okay. And she took it and she f tried to eat that crap. Oh and I was my like, gosh. what kind of society am I living in here, like right now, where <laughs> people can get away with that? Imagine doing that to your parents. I would have been beaten until I had no teeth left, yeah. you know, if I tried something like that to my mother. Right. So, okay, this is the beginning of the story. So he gets away with this, and I'm just thinking, wow, you know, it's not yeah. my place to step in here. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to let it go. Um, 
Anyway, long story short, the mother has to go do something. I have to take them to the park and later I have to take them all for something to eat. She gives me enough money to pay for the, the kids' food. Okay. So we're in the, the park and they're all having fun. They're like doing some fishing and stuff and uh, it's time to go get something to eat. But this fat little boy doesn't want to go. Okay. Okay. He's like, no, he wants to stay and fish. But the other children, the other two are like, oh, we're hungry, teacher, we're hungry, we want something to eat. You think the fat kid would say that? He, well, yeah, I think he just eats too much, he's never hungry. <laughs> so, anyway, the thing is, now he comes along and he's like refusing to move. And I said, look, we have to go get something to eat. He's like, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right. here. Right. I said, no, look, your friends want to get something to eat. We can come and fish after we've gotten something to eat. And he's like, no, I'm not going. And I said, no, you are going. He's like, no, I'm not going. And the other children are like, teacher, we're so hungry. And so I said, okay, listen, you're coming whether you like it or not. Right. So I literally just picked him up and started carrying him to where the taxis <laughs> are. And he went mental, you know, kicking course, and screaming. Course. And he bit me on the arm. And he really? bit me so hard, he drew blood. Wow. So I'm just walking, I'm tough enough, I can take it. Okay. I'm walking there with this, this little, kid. little, little fat kid biting my arm with blood pouring down my arm, he kicking and screaming, he lost the shoe, you know. Oh my and God. I get him to a taxi and I get him in the taxi and he's like kicking the taxi and breaking fixtures off the doors and stuff. And I'm like, listen, I told the taxi driver we're going to his parents' house. Right. Um, so we drive, but the whole way he's, he's hyperventilating, he's tantruming like you won't believe and just punching me and biting me and I'm just sitting there taking it because I'm not going to punch someone else's child. Okay, or, or that's good to hear, man. Or I won't choke them out even though I really wanted to. If of course. I wanted to throw him out of the window of the taxi while I was going at speed. <laughs> um, anyway, so we finally get back to his place. Right. And he doesn't want to get out the taxi now. So I called his mother on the phone and his mother came down to the taxi and the taxi driver, the taxi driver said to the mother, your child is biting the teacher and beating the teacher is really, this is the taxi driver is not coming right. to my defense. And uh, so the mother had a little little talk with uh, this boy and then he, he kind of stood up and he said, sorry, 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 crying and ran off uh, with his mother. And that was the last I, I saw of him and I refused to ever see him again. I right. said, keep your pay, you know. Right. Um, and that was my introduction to how spoiled uh, these little emperors are here in China. Right. And uh, it's not one, there's not only one incident. Every time you go out in public, you'll see one of these guys. Maybe I you've got a story? I won't tell any of those stories because you pretty much covered exactly what happened to me during summer camps. Yeah. It's always during summer camps where you have to spend time away from the classroom. The classroom can be controlled. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. So if you're coming here to do ESL, you yeah. can pretty much control the classroom, especially if you have like a Chinese helper. Yeah. But it gets na it gets nasty when you take them out into the real world because that's where they're used to getting spoiled. Yes. And uh, that's where it usually gets pretty bad. Now, I wanted to go back and a little bit of history. Yeah. and talk about how Chinese students were usually treated, or, or children usually treated by their parents, right? Right. And um, wow, I'll look talk at this, about... Look at this ancient thing. It must be at least 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, continue. I'm assuming Sorry. it's older than that. It's made of mud. Yeah. Anyway. It's got no mortar. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, um, so my wife, when she was growing up, she's eight, born in 1986, same, same year as me. Yeah. And her parents, because she was a girl, they were very disappointed, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Raised yes. her as an only child, obviously. And raised her very strictly because back then girls were treated like shit. Yeah. Part of my language, but they're treated like absolute trash. Sure. <laughs> because the women don't carry on the na household name. So right. basically it dies there. So imagine you're working for the government, you can only have one kid and it's a girl. Yeah. Imagine the disappointment, your, your family's over. Well, yeah. they didn't realize later it would get much worse when she married a foreigner. But anyway, <laughs> that's a different story. I, I killed that bloodline. Yeah. Um, so what happened with her is when she would disobey, and what I mean disobey is I mean like she got a 90 instead of a 95 for a yeah. test. She was not a bad kid, right? Sure. What happened was her father used to take her out onto the hill, string her upside down from a tree, and whip her with a, with a lash. Right? How, did, how did you string her up? What was he using? Took, took ropes, right? Yeah. Put it around her feet back when she was about eight. String uh -huh. her and then hang her from the branch upside down and just crack her. Just crack her over and over again. Right? Sounds interesting. <laughs> She would all, he would also make her like run up and down the hill and do laps while carrying heavy stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, beat her all the time, just slap her really hard in the face. And one time, this is pretty heartbreaking, right? Mm -hmm. She was, uh, she used to 
collect, she used to ask her friends, because her parents didn't give her money, yeah. ask her friends to um, give, back then Cheetos were popular, Yeah, yeah. and they'd have these like little stickers that you get, yeah. and you play a game where you like hit it, and like it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, yeah. she collected those from her friends that were generous enough to give her some, because her parents wouldn't let her play with them. Yeah. And uh, we're going up here? No, we're going back the way we came. Okay. Um, yeah. So she had a drawer full of these little pieces of paper, basically. Yeah. When her father found out, she was she used to basically she used to tell me that she was so sad because she had to get locked in her room all the time by herself and do her homework. Yeah. Then she would open the drawer and just kind of look at them and say, "This is like this is all I got. These are my toys. You know, I'm right, not allowed right. to do anything else." Her father found out that she was collecting these, made her watch as he burned them, and then slapped her in the face. For nice. wasting her time and this is i'm not going to say all kids were raised like this but it was much different back then sure because what i see discipline. nowadays when i take my daughter mm -hmm. out right and people ask me why i don't want to raise my kid here in china yeah these kids boys and girls nowadays are spoiled rotten little yeah. shits yeah dude yeah. they get away with everything at the play place and the playground that i see and i do not want my daughter learning from this this kind of society no because my daughter although i won't beat her like my wife is beaten yeah. She will learn boundaries. She will learn how to be polite and she will learn not to speak when others are speaking, not to take other people's things and not to hit other people and children. Yes, correct. And as soon as she starts to understand what's mm -hmm. going on around her here, I guarantee she'll be influenced. Yes, of course. I mean, if all the other kids can get away with everything, they'll try it too. Yes. Yeah, it's unfortunate, and who knows? I really actually don't know, because you wonder what they're going to turn into. Some of the worst, usually boys, some of the worst of the worst. You wonder, because you've seen them as kids, right? What about fat boy that bit your arm? Like, he physically assaulted you, right? What is he going to do when he grows up? Is he going to is he gonna shoot people? Hold on, Winston. Let me say, I, I'm going to be in before here. I'm pulling a sea milk in before a moment. There's school shootings in America where kids go crazy and they shoot everyone. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about America. These are observations. Like it or not, guys, I'm sorry if you're going to get bent out of shape over this, but parenting, by and large, is absent from the average Chinese household today. So, sea milk, is there anything you'd like to say to everybody before we finish this... Uh subject whether you're a spoiled little shit or a beautiful little princess that behaves herself i implore you to go downstairs like comment and if you haven't already subscribed to this uh, channel because it helps us out a lot yeah and uh, i'm gonna finish this off by name dropping that kid's english Ooh, name docs if you ever come across a chinese uh fat chinese kid who's probably a teenager by now called yeah. Gl Globy. stay away from Gl and Gl if you happen to ever watch this I hope you repent. I hope you actually turn out to be a decent human being because you, 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 you were literally like the devil incarnate as a, as a little kid. And I hope that you've changed your ways. I, uh, I really hope so. Yeah. Anyway, I like to give everybody a second chance. Even, even so, whether you're a glitchy or you're a nice person, right. we love you all the same. So until next time, guys, you know the drill. Stay awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.